How is it that the same players with the same strategy, the same tactics and the same ploys, the same stories and the same accomplices keep fooling us again and again and again? Thankfully, they chose to do this against the same adversary, Narendra Modi. He was to be taught a lesson, a lesson that he would never ever forget. And they succeeded because he didn't. Today, let us go into the details and the facts of what happened in Gujarat in 2002 during those fateful days. Events that set things into motion that would uproot every scheming, collaborating and treasonous force from India. The man who was handling the worsening situation was battling not just the emotions and the machinations of many unscrupulous people within the country and outside, but also a media that loved the sight of blood. The honchos of that media were playing their own games, provoking and directing people to violence. Despite his entreaties and warnings, they would not cease in their Machiavellian games. The first incidences of violence happened on 28th of February around noon. The first three victims were Hindus. By 2 p.m., a request was sent to the central government for bringing the army in within two hours. 28th of February, the troops land in Gujarat along with George Fernandez, the Indian defense minister, despite the dark clouds that were hovering over the border. So let us look at the timeline again closely. February 27, 2002, the train was set on fire and 56 Hindus burned by Muslims in a pre-planned way while the mob stoned them to prevent them from jumping out of the burning train. February 28, 2002, the riots had started. Modi government called the army and sent requests to three Congress governments. Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and Rajasthan for additional police force. Only Maharashtra sent three companies of CRPF. MP and Rajasthan did not send any. March 1st, 2002. The army began flag marches and shoot at sight orders. March 3rd, 2002. The riots were brought under control. On February 28th, not only did Modi call the army, but he also fervently wrote to the chief ministers of Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Maharashtra to send in their police forces for help. That is what Modi did right away. All of them were Congress ruled states, except for Maharashtra. Not a single constable was sent. Here is a part of the special investigation team, the SIT constituted under the Supreme Court, which probed into the riots and gave their report. Where the request sent by Modi to the MP Maharashtra and Rajasthan state governments on February 28, 2002 have been discussed. This has been courtesy guruprasad.net. Left alone, hounded and targeted, Modi fought almost all odds to stop a riot that was turning nasty. The riots were contained statewide within two days across one of the largest states in India. Let us understand how big Gujarat is. Gujarat is larger than Pennsylvania and South Carolina put together in terms of area. And in terms of population, it has larger population than the two of the most populated states in the US, the California and Texas, put together. But then the question is, why did the riots even happen? For this, we'll need to go back to February the 27th and look at the Godhra train burning. The commission found that the local Muslims at Aman Guest House in Godhra had hashed a conspiracy to burn the coaches of car savers who were traveling in coach S6. To operationalize this plan, these local Muslims purchased 140 liters of petrol from a nearby petrol pump on the night of 26th of February 2002. 
The petrol was transported in a green tempo by Imran Chiru, Hassan Charkha, Jabir Behra and Mahmood Khalid and some others and kept in the room of a guest house. The train was late the next morning. Coach, so they changed their strategy and around 8 a.m. spread a false rumor that a Muslim girl, Sofia Bano Sheikh, had been abducted into the train by the car sevaks. When a crowd of Muslims gathered to attack the train, the culprits used this opportunity to set the coach on fire. Sheikh's story, when probed by the commission, was not consistent and was clearly fed to her after the fact. On February 27th, Hassan Lala entered the S6 coach from the rear after forcibly opening the vestibule between S7 and S6 coaches. He threw burning rags to set the coach on fire. The mob outside was meanwhile pelting stones to prevent the passengers from moving out of the burning train coach. Look at the dastardliness of this whole attack. So the main conspirators along with hundreds of Muslims from the Signal Falia area committed a crime that was unimaginable in scale and ferocity. This was a main finding from Noel Parmar, the deputy SP, who contributed to the most extensive investigation by Supreme Court judges, Justice K. G. Shah and Justice G. T. Nanavati. The plan was hashed by Salim Panwala, Razak Kurku and half a dozen others, including the Muslim cleric from Godhra, Malvi Hussain Haji Ibrahim Umarji. As for the report, setting fire to the train was part of a larger conspiracy to instill a sense of fear in the administration and create anarchy in the state. Godhra train burning was a conspiracy by the Muslims in Godhra every few years done to spark riots in an area that was known for riots every few years for over a century. The commission that looked into the Godhra train burning incident of February 27th, 2002 and the subsequent riots in Gujarat comprised of two retired judges at that time, K.G. Shah and G.T. Nanavati. The final report was submitted by the commission to the Gujarat government on November 18th, 2014. It was tabled in Gujarat's Legislative Assembly on December 11, 2019. The Nanavati Mehta Commission report had completely exonerated Narendra Modi for the 2002 Gujarat riots. This report is significant in its scope and findings and lays to rest all speculative and ideological assertions by Modi haters in India and outside who peddled in bigotry and Hinduphobia. It is instructive to remember that the commission was heavily dependent on the investigation by the police which was led by the DIG Rakesh Asthana and conducted by Deputy SP Noel Parmar, a Christian officer known for his efficiency. So the question that is often asked is, did Modi or his government orchestrate the killings of Muslims? This is another claim by the Modi haters that has been repeated by them ad nauseum. The commission lays it to rest. It clearly says, there is no evidence to show that these attacks were either inspired or instigated or abated by any minister of the state. The commission said in its report, which runs into over 1500 pages and is compiled in nine volumes. It said the police at some places were ineffective in controlling the mob because of their inadequate numbers or because they were not properly armed. That was the truth based on the facts as probed by the best investigative police officers collaborating with independent judges. But the falsehoods that the media kept sharing was to demonize Modi. At every juncture, he was targeted and humiliated. The question is, why was this Godra attack planned? Why at that time? Why was this whole riot so very important? The BJP party, specifically Atal Bihari Vajpayee, the Prime Minister at that time, and of course Modi, 
all of them were attacked by media and india's adversaries based on the gujarat riots of 2002 that was a great way to take them down the bjp government which had done tremendous work until then was pushed to the back foot and weakened globally so it could not take measures that it needed to in the interest of india and even at that time the forces if we carefully look were exactly the same as we see today the script the players the stories the media outlets nothing has changed let us explain operation parakram was a backdrop to gujarat 2002 when we look at the happenings in godra and the subsequent riots in 2002 we forget the scenario in which all these things happened and these circumstances were are never talked about let us remind ourselves about that time india had two terrorist attacks october 1st 2001 jammu and kashmir legislative assembly december 13th 2001 the indian parliament was attacked in new delhi atal bihari vajpayee was a prime minister at that time india initiated a massive build up against pakistan on the border and was ready to attack that operation was called operation parakram the indian government and the armed forces came together and planned the attack against pakistan the plans were ready on january 14th 2002 considering that it would take 3 to 4 weeks for deployment on the western borders the armed forces planned action for the second week of january 2002 after much debate the service chiefs opted for a limited offensive against the terrorists training camps in pok the d day was tentatively fixed for january 14th do you see the similarities of what happened in balakot and the surgical strikes here the international community was trying to intervene british prime minister tony blair flew into india in the first week of january and lk adwani flew to the us on january 8th meanwhile pervez musharraf made a speech on january 12th where he declared that terrorism in the name of kashmir was unjustified he also quote unquote banned six terrorist organizations but this was all an elaborate nonsense the pakistani terrorist groups struck again later that year managed by pakistani isi on may 14th the terrorists attacked the army residential quarters at kaluchak cantonment in jammu and killed 22 women and children apart from the jawans remember uri yes something like that but just far worse because they killed the wives and the kids of the army jawans as well so we have to understand what was happening at that time the army units from gujarat they could not be brought back to gujarat at that time because the indian army was eyeball to eyeball with pakistan ready for the war on january 14 the international forces were working hard to avoid that but where was the army unlike the earlier occasions when the army stationed in ahmedabad could be moved in at an hour's notice this time it took more than 2 days the troops earmarked for internal riot control duties were more than 600 kilometers away deployed on the border and ready for war yes the army did come in the next day not the full force but whatever was available and that could be sent at short notice but the redeployment of the army cost india all the options in operation parakram that vajpayee had in his hands two divisions had to be diverted to gujarat one division covers 50 to 75 kilometers of the border it was a huge loss to operation parakram plans if we look at these circumstances closely specifically how the godra was planned and then used to anger people and when the seculars like tista sitalwar started blaming the victims themselves then it is clear that the complete planning for the attacks on india was done in a multifaceted manner the isi the pakistani army the lashkar e taiba the terrorists within india and bought and pliable media were all orchestrated towards just one goal an all round attack on india and complete humiliation of the government and the country once things were taken care of in gujarat around early may 2002 the troops rejoined their comrades on the border but it was too late by then 
the Himalayan region becomes more susceptible to infiltrators and the element of surprise was gone and it is then that the Kaluchak cantonment was attacked on May 14th killing our jawans their kids and wives all to further rub it into india's wounds while indian government could not respond back anymore to teach india more importantly to teach bjp a lesson that it will never forget and modi never forgot that lesson what do you see today his resolve his battles his counters his planning his ways are in many ways all a product of those events in 2002 the godra the riots the operation parakram the kaluchak that is why perhaps when uri and pulwama happened the response was fierce and strong it was not just a jawans at uri or pulwama whose deaths had to be avenged but also the deaths of those 22 women and kids at kaluchak cantonment 